So this is our agenda today. I will be doing housekeeping like Chomba has mentioned and um, and I, I will be responsible for literally making sure everyone is ready to map. We are all open and able to speak. And then I think right now I will just hand it over to Chomba to be speaking about the role of open mapping for early warning and anticipatory action. And then after that, I will ask our partner from FAO Michael to go ahead and explain to us why we are here. And then after we shall get into exactly what has brought us here, we shall learn and see what actually what those dams are, how they look like and how we are going to be tagging them in OSM. Lastly, we shall have the next steps where we shall guide you on how you can continue uh, mapping and working with us. I will hand it over to Michael for the next, rather to Chomba. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, Tabi. Oh, ask uh, Rebecca for that. Yeah, uh, so just talk about the role of um, open mapping uh, and L warning. So as you are aware, uh, in the, uh, I think this year and last year, we have been facing with a lot of uh, um, issues in our regions, particularly um, in um, uh, Ethiopia and other countries to do with El Nino. And the number of people have been affected because of us, including my country, Zambia, at the moment we are going through drought and in order for people to be helped that it's very important that uh, map is uh, map data is generated and uh, so that um, air warning system can be developed from the data that is going to be uh, developed by people like us who are in this uh, uh, meeting it's very very important and do not take it lightly you are the people that are trying also by your your mapping you are trying to help out there uh, with people that have been affected. It's said that over about uh, 3.2 million people in uh, about 66 have been affected because of the uh, El Nino and lack of water uh, in Somalia. So the data that is going to be created to be used uh, with the team, our partner, that is FO, uh, to develop L warning systems, which will be used to send uh, communications and help people that have been affected to have information and be aware of what is happening so please thank you very much and uh, for the next one month every time that we go out uh for the meeting please just like the way that you have showed up here please we need your help and we are very very thankful for your support and for coming up in numbers just like this and um we just want to wish you all the best for today as we map. And please, if you have any questions um, available, uh, Rebecca is available uh, so that we help each other and all the best as we start mapping. Thanks very much. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you very much, Chomba. I will hand it over to Michael for the next uh, bit. Michael, are you around? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Michael Makoha. I'm a GIS specialist uh, here at FAO Swalim. And I'll, uh, I'll just give a brief remark uh, on behalf of uh, FAO and Swalim uh, in this meeting. And I want to start by indicating that uh, on behalf of uh, FAO and uh, Swalim, I extend uh, my heartfelt welcome and express our sincere gratitude to your dedication to this initiative of mapping. As you already know, and uh, many colleagues online who come from Somalia, that Somalia has been grappling with the severe consequence of drought, which has been alternating with flood for many, many years. And uh, uh, this uh, season, the coming season, the Climate Prediction Center, CPC, has predicted a 66% 66 likelihood that La Nina will intensify during September to October and to November, with a 74% chance of persisting into 2025. As La Nina strengthened, the threat of extended dry spells and insufficient ra rainfall looms large, endangering the livelihoods and food security of millions. In response to these urgent challenges, 
we are pleased to collaborate with the uh, hot uh, OSM uh, in launching this crucial surface water mapping campaign. Uh, and this initiative goes beyond just data collection. It's about empowering communities, it's about enhancing our early warning systems and ensuring that timely intervention reach those most at risk. So ladies and gentlemen, your work as a volunteer mapper is instrumental in protecting lives and livelihoods in Somalia. By identifying and documenting essential surface water sources, you are playing a key role in your collective effort to bolster drought preparedness and emergency response. The, dat uh, the data you gather will be central to our ongoing mission to mitigate the impact of drought and ensure that communities are equipped with to withstand these challenges, challenging conditions. We are profoundly thankful for your participation and commitment. Together, we are making a tangible difference and together we will continue to build a more resilient future for Somalia and the Horn of Africa. So I thank you and I wish you all the best as you participate in this important, uh, crucial uh, exercise. Uh, to be able to cover the whole country in terms of uh, water resources. And this one will give uh, FAO and many uh, actors within the country uh, a very important data set uh, upon which uh, intervention will be best. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I declare this uh, mapping open. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, now that we all know what we are going to do, I will get started. Um, this has happened so fast. I thought you were going to speak and speak and speak. So I will share my screen to get us started so that we can understand exactly what we are going to map. So I encourage each and every one of you, please let, let us have this session as interactive as possible. I would like us to be free. I do not, I don't live in Somalia, so I want us all to leverage the uh, the Somalian team that is here. We are depending on you on this part. We would like you to help us explain to us what these features are. But besides that, we are just going to go through to see what how we can identify these features and how we are tagging them in OSM. Okay. So we are tagging these um, water sources as natural equals water, water equals reservoir, and we are mapping them as polygon, as sh shown right here. And we are particularly adding the shape and the description because why the shape? Because this shape will be computed during the analysis to me to measure the amount of water in the water source. And then the description will be used for basically functionality. They want to know is it is the water being used for farm, uh, uh, farms? Is it being used for uh, home usage, etc. So these, three, these four tags, as you can see them here, are very key. So we are mapping the shape. Is it circular or is it uh, rectangular? So as you can all see, uh, this is not a perfect circle. So what we are doing basically, if a feature is turning towards a circle, we tag that as a circle. If it is turning towards a rectangle, we tag that as a rectangle. Please take in on this. And then we are also adding the tag as natural equals water because the water in the reservoir is natural it's not like human made and then the water equals reservoir because the that water source is used to store water yeah and then so we have a couple of water reservoirs and uh some are man-made some are natural so they are, they they look quite different, but they're distinctive, very easy to identify. For instance, for this case, there is usually uh, piles of sand, like you can see right here around, see? Piles of sand around, yeah? And then you, some of them, you can clearly see the water. Some of them, because of the imagery, you don't see the water or some is dry. So once you see any feature that looks like this, and it is uncovered okay so number one look at the piles of sand around 
Number two, it has under the sand is usually more like a fence around, and then it's like a depression and uncovered. So once you see a feature like this, those we are mapping them as natural equals water, water equals reservoir, and then we put the different description. So under description, I just forgot to mention is you just describe the environment. You say maybe um the reservoir, the water source is found in a farmland. The water source is in a settlement. It has access, it has a road for access. Literally, according to your English, you just describe the environment where that water source is. Okay. Then others are called Balkad. Forgive me, people from Somalia. These are water sources that have covers on them. So usually they cover them to prevent water evaporation from the heat, from the sunlight. And they are very easy to confuse with buildings, but one key thing to, I, to, to note is usually they have a bit of sand accumulation around or a fence, I'll show you as, it, uh, as we move forward. And then they are covered and then they have sand around and they are actually in different colors some can be blue white just like the way we usually map um buildings with different color color roofs okay so again to note here be very keen not to map buildings make sure whatever you're mapping has an evidence of excavation or some sort of sand around or some sort of fence around and they're usually isolated you find like one of them so when you find something in a fence and and there are like several of them chances are very high that those are buildings rather those are buildings yes if there are so many but if you find individual those are water reservoirs and please feel free we have enough time feel free to unmute and ask questions okay you we shall even allow you to share your screen and yeah, let's let's make sure that the data that we are mapping is correct so that the response or it is used for a greater purpose. Okay. So others are quite small. Is that a hand? Okay. So others are quite small, as if uh, yes. with the fence, like I mentioned, see this one? Some of them have this kind of fence around and they are they are colored. So we shall see as we map. So others are quite small, they can be circular, they can be uh, rectangular, like you're seeing them. For this case, you really need to zoom in closely to a greater extent to identify them. Yeah. And and then others are more, in, in, contra, in contrary, others are more natural. They have like vegetation around, like you can see this one. And, and again, there's a way they have a bit of uh, a bit of fence and vegetation some you clearly see the water like this the water is brown some you'll see green so yeah we are going to familiarize ourselves with that such features and these look like they are water reservoirs but actually they are not i would like you to really pay, uh, be keen on this um we do have these so you'll see an area like this it has as if brown things it has a fence like the one we had seen these are not reservoirs remember while we identifying reservoirs usually they are individual okay they have a fence yes like this but you realize here it's like there are settlements around yeah and this brown stuff they are not reservoirs um, sometimes people map you see this is brown they think since it's brown it looks like this water here it's a reservoir, no, please be keen on that. Some colored whitish stuff, those are not reservoirs. Some are like open, they're like crawls, just open like this and no reservoirs. You can see brown corner stuff. These are all not reservoirs. And sometimes someone just maps a river, like water collected in a river. They could use them for, uh, but they're not particularly reservoirs. Some vegetations that are thick, they are not reservoirs. Don't map colored buildings and etc. And this, these are farmlands. Please don't map them as reservoirs. This is like a, a building. Don't map spaces as reservoirs. Let us all um, refer to this. So one key thing to do for starters, once you open a task, 
we actually have these images in the in the in the tasks so look through and say am i seeing any feature that looks like this yeah am i seeing any feature that looks like this am i seeing any feature that looks like this if so you go ahead and map if you're not sure you ask in the chat or if you are not sure we have i'll show you where you can send messages or if you're not like 60 percent sure it's better you leave it because we have the next process which is called validation where we get our mappers check the work map what is missing, correct what has been mapped wrongly, correct the tagging, correct the description, etc. Do we have any questions? Or do we have anyone? Maybe if someone from Somalia can describe to us what these are, how they, how it is in reality. Yeah, that would be nice. I think I saw Mohammed. Please feel free to unmute yourself and yeah. Mohammed is there or um, Mariam? Are you there? Oh, anyone from Somalia, you can volunteer. Yes, uh, Rebecca, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yeah, and uh, what we can see there is uh, a bucket, um, but you to usually identify the bucket mm. always kind of some residences around the barcades or the reserve. Mm -hmm. The reservoirs are not in a, in a bear land. They are always around residences, maybe a village near the village or near some mm -hmm. residence. So you can just maybe zoom out sometimes what you are mapping to mm -hmm. find if there are some residences around that water source. So awesome. that understand. Thank you. Yeah, if you can, if someone else can tell us about this or you, you can tell us about this because they are different. Yeah, say difference, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, my name is Mahmoud Ali. Yeah, when we compare that, uh, these two pictures, uh, which is that picture is, uh, is a bracket, and other picture is uh, a dam, earth dam, yeah. Earth dam, yeah. Yeah. So from, I think it was Miriam or one of you told me these are called earth dam because they use sand, they don't put plastic, so it's earth, it's like they use earth materials to make this. There's nothing plastic, there are no polythenes, it's just earth material, like you can see here, sand, etc. So before we go to the demo, do we have any questions? Yes, let me first stop sharing for a bit. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I like I'm to, seeing uh, a hand up. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, I was wondering, like, uh, if we are getting something on map which is man-made, why don't we make use of uh, time lapse on uh, uh, Earth engine and see if it used to exist five years back as well or not, because if it will be natural, it will be there and we can map it better, understanding what, what things are natural and what things are man-made. Okay, thank you very much for that question. So that is why, this is just a first step. We have our team from the FAO, I think, I think Michael leads on that, the GIS team. They are going to do the, uh, like the, that analysis that you're talking about. So our work today is just to identify them and then they will go and do, they use, they will, they will integrate different uh, GIS pla platforms and GIS tools to work and analyze that data and come up with, um, a whole analysis so at the end of this campaign we shall have uh, a, a a wrap up where we shall have michael talk about how they use the data the impact how they analyzed it and the next steps yeah i hope i answered you yeah yeah that sounds good but i think like even in this phase uh if, even if like at least when somebody is mapping if we provide when with them to them like uh, the water index map it will be easier for them to distinguish between what is actually water and what is looking like water okay nice i think i will we shall get in touch i will leave yeah. some contacts behind so that we yeah, can sure. see how we can we can work around that are you from india 
I'm from India, but like I now live and work in Netherlands. Ah, oh, nice, nice. I, I wish I wish you joined. Um, so I, I, we shall get in touch. I think this is okay. great stuff. Um, so yeah, do we have any other questions? Yes, is is Smile? Go ahead. Yes, I'm Smile from uh, FAO Team Somalia. Sorry, yes, team. So just I can add that uh, there is a kind of uh, surface water. Mm. Uh, normally, uh, it's a bit like uh, uh, natural, yeah. And actually, it's kind of a spring, yeah. Where well, oh, spring yeah. is away. So okay. I think we need uh, to consider that that kind. Mm. Uh, maybe I can uh, drop uh, an image for, from that, yeah, to the okay. to the message, yeah. That that is very good to know. Hi, we have so much resources here. I hope, Michael, you're taking note of this. I, I will leave. I will ask you to join us on a platform where we can communicate, and yeah, have ideas and can improve this data set and manipulate it. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? We have enough time. So yeah. before we go to the actual demo, I will let me just. Oh, I think, uh, uh, Yes, please, you can go ahead. Yeah, I just want to uh, uh, answer Arish's question. You can also use uh, EO browser and Sentinel Hub. So that also you can see the time lapse five years back in the same locality. Yeah, that's a very good one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. So on that note, let me share a WhatsApp group where all of us are, but feel free to DM me um feel free to send me a direct message especially the i think three of you that have ideas on how we can work out this and make a very beautiful analysis um that is the whatsapp group join and feel free to send me a dm i'll send i'll send a message at the end of this so that you know my my whatsapp and then we shall see how we can connect yeah so that is the chat and for those that have not yet uh, completed this form i am kindly requesting you all to complete this form so that we can get in touch with you yeah i love i love i love this already i can't wait to get started yes isma do you have any other question i could share my screen uh, for a bit. yes um yeah i'm trying to drop the example that I mentioned it to the message, but I don't know I can't. So um, I'm not sure if I can share quickly my screen. Yeah, you can share quickly. No problem. You can share quickly. You can share your screen. Yeah, I should be able to share your screen. Thank you guys for engaging. See. This is nice. And if you so, haven't completed, please forget. Don't forget to complete the form. It's very key. Yes, you can confirm if you can yes, see me. Yes, I can see your screen go, very clear. Your goal is borrow. Yeah, you see, this is uh, yes. This is a small. This is a, this area is uh, near to the Groe, northeast uh, of Somalia. So here, uh, this actually stream, huh, river. Yes, uh, it's a stream. stream. So mm -hmm. and you see, this is a permanent water, uh, based on uh, discharge of spill, or spill uh, away from spill. So we need to, to discuss this. I will go into map the, this kind of water as mm. a natural or not. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. 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 We were mainly mapping. Um, we were not. Uh, we were not really mapping those. I think Michael, correct me if I'm wrong. We were mainly mapping the ones that have been built, not necessarily a stream because streams will, will be sources of water so michael correct me if we are mapping those we can go ahead and map those but initially we were not thinking about that yeah michael are you there it looks like we've lost michael maybe yes yes uh michael anyway we shall i'll i'll ask michael about this and then we get started but let okay uh, rebecca can i go ahead yes yes go ahead 
Okay, thank you so much. I'm Abdullahi Ali from uh, FOS Swalim Somalia. I work with, uh, with Michael. So basically, Ismail is a colleague of mine as well. So uh, the example that Ismail was showing with us, uh, that was a uh, sandy dam. And uh, actually in here, Swalim, we mostly map the sand dams. So for those who uh, don't know it or not familiar, sandy dam is uh, like a structure of uh, man-made man -made, uh, concrete mm -hmm. or stones, yeah? built across uh, either the wadis or the river yeah. you know that that flows during a certain uh, season so uh, the sand dam is always helps uh, together uh, sand upstream which naturally uh, increases the nice. the wadi the wadi or, or the river bed ability to store water yeah so this yeah. uh, sand dam is uh, reduce evaporation of, of of stored water allowing mm -hmm. it to remain in the sand body for, for a longer time. So what I'm saying is, uh, we are mapping this, but uh, basically in the context of Somalia, uh, mm -hmm. sand dam is uh, are not that much. Maybe it's, it's you can get a lot of examples from north part of Somalia, Somaliland. Uh, mm -hmm. But maybe we can discuss that uh, with Michael later on, whether we need yeah. to map or not, but we need to map, oh. but it needs like a, for the explanation and example is so I'm, I'm 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 recommending let us just mm -hmm. discuss that Leave it yeah, for yeah. now yeah well, that's good to know so we've not been mapping those yet but yeah so let's get started everyone i have just shared i'll share again a link to the to the project that we are working on it is open but please make sure you follow instructions just make sure you just make sure you you map exactly what you're we are going to do like copy and paste what you see here is what you map for now for starters until we get familiar with our team from somalia explaining us explaining to us the different features and then we shall get to know welcome miriam from can Putin. i ask a question please yes please i want to ask you we've seen very many water bodies i need to ask you what tags should we have in mind because we yeah. talk about many things so just like a recap to just know what to tag when you're doing the actual mapping of the work yeah so i described that but now we are going to do it practically so let me share my screen and we are going to to start on that so this is the project we are working on we have already had a, a debrief about why we are mapping why we are here by the team already and so right now um, basically, for those that have never seen this, this is a tasking manager. It is a collaborative platform where we create um, um, we create projects in specific areas of interest. This is one to collab for collaborative mapping and again to easily capture any data quality issue. And then again, it is easy. It just makes us um, our work much easier. So again, this is how it looks like. Basically, the description of which we've already know the the, uh, the the imagery we are using um the coordination who is responsible permission so i've left this open but it should be for intermediates and above but then since we are here we are going to have an official training with each and every one of you i've left it open we are going to start mapping after we are all familiar and who can valid, validate these are trained people that go in and check if there's any missing tags, any missing attributes, etc. Like I'd mentioned earlier on, this is, um, is open. You can communicate to us. If you see anyone doing data vandalism, if you think this imagery is better than the other, literally anything that you'd like to communicate to us in regards to the project or you want to ask the project uh, manager anything, or you feel like this is an interesting thing for you and you'd like to communicate further with the project manager. And again, this, this like, like my commission earlier on, this data that we are creating is not only for the FAO team, it's for everyone. So you, once you've created this, you can download the different ship files here. You can download it as a GeoJSON, as a shapefile, as a KML, according to what you want. This is just contribution timeline. We haven't started, that's why you're not seeing anything. And in case you want to download the areas of interest, you go down here. So once this project is complete, you can contribute to more projects that are related to 
the one we are working on okay it's open so to to contribute you go right here and say contribute but first we are using um i don't know if charles is here charles are you here yeah yeah i mean okay, share the link to downloading josem that is easier for people so charles is going to to share that link can you hear me? i mean yes, i can hear you well can you please share the link that you shared some time back I want, I would like to admit someone. Okay. If you can, Charles is going to share the link. Um, he's going to share the link to downloading Josem, the tool that we are going to use. And then let me clear this up. I was doing some edits. So as Charles do, shares that, that tool is called uh, Josem. It's Java OpenStreetMap Editor. So for those that have never used this tool, this tool is a more advanced tool, unlike the ID editor for beginner mappers. And it has lots of editing tools that makes mapping very easy and, and, and fast. Yeah. So you need to have this tool in order for you to contribute to this task. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I don't think you'll be able to contribute to this task very effectively. So um let me just illustrate how you get it um so the link that that uh my colleague that that my colleague charles is going to share please feel free to download so you just go to josim you download um, um you download uh, i don't know who is that speaking if you if could you please unmute for now shall let you speak later so depending on the type of computer or operating system that you have you can download uh windows apple or if you have ubuntu as your operating system you go ahead and download that and then you'll be required to download java um java for java you are going to do the same thing okay if you have a challenge with java please let me know i have another option that can support you in downloading that so java is a an operating system that supports Josem. so you can't have this without this okay so once you have that you will have something like this this is the tool so before you start using this tool you will need to to activate certain plugins so you come to edit uh edit preferences plugins okay so here you will have um you will have util okay the util is important if it's your first time the building tool is also good enough maybe for the future use okay and then you will come right here and make sure the expert mode on the the x the, the the left hand side is make sure you activate that and then if it's your first time still you have to authorize your osm make sure you choose this second auth the one with point two 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 point zero and then it will send you to your browser and then you accept your logins your correct osm username and password yeah in case you don't have anyone with osm username and password please just send me i don't have an osm account and then i walk through that okay so once you've entered in your osm account you have enter you have you have entered in the different plugin utils is good the building tools for the future you're good to go and then and then um the remote control it's very very important just check this first box so what the remote control does it's just going to connect your id rather your tasking manager the platform i shared with this uh with josem so that once you run your task it is able to run here okay so since we are from different places in the world if you prefer arabic if you prefer germany if you prefer french you can go ahead and change to your preferred language so mine is english is that checks yeah so is do you have any questions up to this extent Uh, yes, yes, please. Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, good afternoon. 
Uh, yeah. Can we get a recording of this webinar, please? Because I yes, think I would want to make references to a number of things that you said. Yeah, we, yeah, possible? yeah. We we are recording this and we shall share it as soon as it's it's up. Okay, thank you very much. Awesome. So now it's time for us to get started. So as you can see, this red button, you click on it. Okay, I'm seeing we have some people already in, which is good. So you can preferably select, pan through the map, maybe just for starters. We have white, which is available for mapping, light brown, which is rather blue, which is ready for validation, that next step. And then brown is, uh, someone has mapped and hasn't completed everything, someone could invalidate that. And then green, it means it has been mapped and checked, so it's good to go. Unavailable for mapping, sometimes it's a cloud, black or white, and there's nothing we can do in that area. Priority area, it's pink usually. So sometimes um, the project managers want us to go to the field and they want data collection to be like to be started, let me say in the northern part, so they would mark that, so that we finish the first step of remote mapping, and then and then after that they they go to the field and collect while we are now concentrating in the lower part. So yeah, be keen on that. So to start mapping, I'm looking. I have to look for the white, so I could pick randomly, or I could just say select a task. Okay, there is one particular task that I wanted to us to see. It's this one, so I've just selected that. This task here, and then I'm saying map the selected task. I need to run in my. Um, I'm I'm requesting if you're not speaking to keep your mic uh on mute. Uh, okay. So this is how it looks like, and. Let me just describe the interface in case you have anyone starting. So the JOSM interface looks like this. This is the menu bar. It has different tools. Uh, we have the imageries in case you want to, to like compare. We find imageries here. In We have windows, very important. In case you close anything here, this is called the information panel. You can easily find it here. For instance, if I were to close authors, okay, I would just come here and then pick the authors right where you are here, and it would come back. So if you lose anything here, they're always here, and then the map persona, these are different other editing tools that are good to use. And then the commission, the information panel is right here that has the OSM layer you're working on. So you have to make sure the OSM layer is the active one with the green button. Uh, permit me to just add it to the ones. Okay. So, um, so your yeah, OSM layer has to be on top and then the imagery. So sometimes the imagery may look dull. You can, you can input the Remember, you improving the visibility is just for you, okay? It is just for you. So, so what you do is you select it, make sure it is highlighted by blue, select the eye, and then I want you to concentrate your eye on my image. And it's edit, it's 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 just on your image, so you don't have to watch to worry. So you I want you to concentrate on my my interface here. See when I move. So when I move the opacity like this, it darkens. Eh? So you can improve it the way you want. The color, you see, you can make it brighter. You can uh, adjust it a bit. So Rebecca, Rebecca, yes, yes. yes. Uh, sorry, sorry to disturb. Can you mute uh, Labania Wafuna mic because it's, it's disturbing us? Yeah, just a minute. Um. How is the person? It's called who? Laban Wafula. He muted himself. Okay, good, good. Thank you very much. 
sorry about that so like i was saying if the visibility you know sometimes image are tend to be not sharp or not good enough for you you can play around the image when you select on the eye right here as you can see you can you can just move around the color you adjust it according to how you want it and you don't have to worry because you're adjusting this for yourself you can play around the gamma okay and then you can play around the sharpness to improve just in case you feel like your image is not good enough and then we have tags and membership this is where you remember when i told you osm use server you have to add in your correct username and password yeah just a minute all right come and take so your correct osm username and password so what you can do here uh, yeah rather for tags and membership it will flag what this exactly is you get like this is a highway tag does unclassified okay so now under authors you can see if you haven't put your name we shall never know that it is you that has actually edited this yeah so you have to make sure you enter in your correct username and password yeah so we have tags and uh, we have uh filters these ones we can learn them with time and then we have uh map paint style these are not important for today but if you'd like you can navigate through and see so right here we have the building tool if you've never used this this is used to map buildings and it tags it automatically but today mainly we are going to use the line tool which is here okay the line tool so how do we get started remember remember the things we said remember the images we saw if i may go back we i'm seeing so many of them here we said it, it is a fence and it is individual some of them are colored these are called backcards okay they are covered and yeah so this is colored and covered this is a back backcard so we are going to now get started do we have any questions as far now do you have any questions i'm yeah, waiting for